Welcome to Biz Filing's Expert Insights. Our guest this week on Expert Insights is Karen Kerrigan. She's president of the Small Business and Entrepreneurship Council. One of the group's main points of focus is easing the regulatory burden on businesses. So what regulations have changed or been scrapped in recent months, and what is the actual impact of those decisions on businesses? And Karen, thanks so much for being with us. Oh, thank you, Greg. Always a pleasure. The last time we spoke, you were quite encouraged by the regulatory rollback we're seeing in Washington. How would you describe the pace now and, more importantly, the importance of the regulations being considered? Oh, I think it's been um, quite meaningful and significant in terms of the reforms and the effort that has been put forward by the administration um, when the president uh, was, um, you know, when he took office, he uh, essentially released a couple of executive orders that directed the agencies to go full bore and look at outdated regulation, listen to the small business community, and um, and find things that either need to be repealed, modernized, and streamlined. And um, those efforts are going quite well on a number of fronts. Um, you know, practically every agency, from the Department of Labor to the EPA, um, Health and Human Services, um, the the IRS. So, on a range of fronts, it's been very, very encouraging. In fact, just recently, the uh, Council of Economic Advisors at the White House they put out a uh, a report that uh, found that uh, consumers and businesses uh, are saving about $220 billion per year um, and will continue to after these uh, rule changes uh, go into full effect. So, you know, regulation disproportionately impacts small businesses. And uh, so it's good to see uh, the regulatory agencies reaching out. It's good to see those uh, in charge of small business outreach at the SBA making a continuous effort to talk to small businesses to identify rules and regulations that need to be, again, either repealed, modernized, streamlined, or done a different way um, based on our, our modern economy. So things are looking good, but there's there's still a ways to go, Greg. I know some regulations are more impactful than others. So as you look at some of those key areas, and labor, health, and environment are certainly three of the biggest areas of all, which changes, uh, whether it's streamlining or, or repealing altogether, are business owners getting back to you and saying, hallelujah? Well, you know, I think just broadly speaking, um, you know, during the economic, uh, during the weak economic recovery uh, prior to this administration, and um, there, was, there was just a lot of concern about um, the threat of new regulation on a regular basis. Um, you know, new rules and regulations that came out of various different federal agencies, creating a lot of uncertainty. And, um, and and when small businesses have that uncertainty, they're not investing. Big businesses are not investing. Um, so that does impede growth, uh, economic growth. It impedes job creation and in, impedes the, um, um, obviously, small businesses, their revenues and the opportunities they have in the marketplace. So there's sort of been that sort of sort of high level feeling of sort of freedom that they can focus on their business and there won't be any new big rules coming out of Washington that will uh, 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 negatively affect their business. So I think uh, on the big ones, I mean, certainly um, on the Department of Labor, um, there was, you know, the big overtime rule that uh, was pushed in the Obama administration. That was put on hold. Uh, There was a court order uh, where the judge said that the DOL would have to uh, go back and revise that rule. It just doubled um, uh, it doubled the the salary of, of of overtime pay. It did a lot of things that really would hurt a lot of small businesses. And so that is still being in the process of being revised. And that was a big one. I would say the other uh, um, key ones have been have been health care because um, the cost of health coverage continues to be a big pain point for small businesses, particularly. Uh, in their effort to compete for workers in the marketplace. They want to be able to offer coverage, and that cost of coverage is very high. So there's been a lot of rule changes at HHS uh, in concert with the Department of Treasury that, uh, you know, produced, um, you know, better health reimbursement accounts, that uh, uh, produced uh, more practical short-term limited-duration plans, uh, that produce association health plans that will allow small businesses to pool 
uh, and create more market power for themselves so they can uh, compete for lower prices and more choices. So there's been a plethora of new rules, positive rulemakings um, on the um, on the healthcare front that are really bringing more choices and lower cost in the health insurance market, and that's a, a really positive thing from a small business perspective. And those are going to continue. Um, more, ch- we expect more changes uh, really soon to create even more choices and affordability. That's huge for small business. There's other stuff on the IRS end. Again, Greg, we're just working on so many fronts. We've got to revise the whole regulatory process. It's so outdated in terms of how rules are being made. I mean, it's 50 years old. The Administrative Procedures Act, which governs how the sausage is made, as they say. So we're trying to get something moving in the Congress that would um, change that whole process so that small businesses um, have more, uh, uh, more, more of a voice. There's more accountability in the system so that regulators are not uh, creating rules in a vacuum and are listening to those who will be regulated before they move forward uh, with final rules. So, um, again, a lot to be done, but uh, there's a lot of progress that has been made. You mentioned what you hope to see get through the Congress, and you put out a report earlier this year talking about a lot of things that had gotten done in the first two years of this administration and some things that got held up in Congress. The House and the previous Congress had passed them. The Senate didn't get them done. Now, of course, we've got different parties controlling the two houses. So are we at loggerheads on these issues as well, or are we finding some common ground on some of these things? You know, Greg, there's common ground. I think the big issue um, uh, that we were so hopeful on in the last Congress was a a bill called Jobs Act 3.0, and that bundled about 30 um, capital access and capital formation bills that would uh, would have done a lot of things to change rules and regulation and compliance um, at the at outdated securities rules at the SEC, the Securities and Exchange Commission, to really boost capital formation and capital access, modernize a lot of rules that would be very helpful to uh, startups and to growth-oriented businesses in their search for capital. So th- that bundle of bills passed the House, I think, with only two people voting against it. So it was over 400 positive votes. By big bipartisan uh, victory for us. But it did get tied up over on the Senate side. We thought they were going to act on it. Then we had the government shut down and all that, and it didn't happen. Now, in this Congress, there is still bipartisan support uh, for these pieces of legislation, both on the House side and the Senate side. Right now, we're moving them individually, which takes a a longer period of time. But also, Greg, as you probably know, you know, turning on your TV or reading the headlines, the House is focused on so many other things in terms of investigations, um, you know, pretty massive um, amount of oversight on the administration. And that really does, uh, you know, take away a lot of time that could be spent on legislating. And um, and so this, this capital access issue hasn't been a big priority, particularly on the House Financial Services Committee, where they really do a lot of um, oversight on a, on a number of fronts. But we still remain hopeful. There's time left. We have to be hopeful, right? <laughs> And, 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 and we think the new members, particularly on the Democrat side, um, you know, those who were in tight uh, – in those sort of tight uh, districts, um, those toss-up seats, those lean Republican seats where a Democrat may have won, they want to bring back um, – uh, they want to show what they, they did for their districts. And so there is a lot of um, – uh, a lot of noise uh, from those members to actually do these types of bipartisan bills that will make a difference for small businesses and entrepreneurs. Garen, just a minute or two left in our conversation here. And I know regulatory reform is a huge priority at the SBE Council, but I know there's other things you're focused on as well. Uh, so what else are you focused on? What else are you hearing from small business owners about ways that policies in Washington can make a big difference? I think a couple of things um, are on our radar screen right now. We do have a lot of members um, that are impacted um, by trade and what's happening in global markets. Uh, The USMCA agreement, which is the modernized NAFTA, we're really working on on getting that through the Congress. Um, I I think that probably won't be addressed until September. Um, You know, on the whole trade issue in general and the whole tariffs issues, We've always told the administration the longer, you know, the tariffs and the uncertainty with China and just sort of using tariff as a tool, you know, continues the, the, the deeper and the broader the impact on the economy and small business. So we're hearing from our lot of, a lot of our members now 
retailers, those in the construction industry, et cetera, that they are being impacted by those and it has is having a competitive impact. So um, we are pushing the administration, let's get something done with China. We realize the importance of intellectual property and, and getting that done and having an enforceable agreement there. Um, USMCA, and just supporting the administration in general on a lot of its um, efforts to cut uh, trade agreements because we have so many members that are looking to go global. We live in a platform-based economy, and it's a lot easier, but we still need to lower those barriers to trade. So that it's a big issue for all business groups in Washington, and certainly it's a big issue for small business as well. Karen, always great to talk to you, and we've learned a lot about uh, different ways that small businesses are benefiting because of the work that you do and uh, that others are doing in Washington. Thanks very much for your time today. We always appreciate it. Thank you so much, Greg. Karen Kerrigan is president of the Small Business and Entrepreneurship Council. I'm Greg Corumbus, and for more information on this topic, please call Biz Filings at 844-202-0707. <laughs> Biz Filings, a Walters Kluwer company, has been incorporating businesses since 1996. 